thirties and he's he's living, he's working. He, he used to be a welder, gave that up because the fumes are just, you know, lung condition, cystic fibrosis, he couldn't weld it. I'm just curious, I mean, obviously you've always been a good guy or, you know, pretty much. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said you've always been a good guy, that's evident in your character, but, but how did this change you or what's your takeaway from it? What's my takeaway? I'm a, I've been a Christian most of my <laughs> adult life, but when God calls you very personally and you hear his voice and I made no mistake, I heard his voice that day when I was being shot at and the guy pointed a gun as an instructor, I've seen a pistol fired multiple different angles before never one pointed at me. And he spoke to me at that moment and said, don't worry about that, do what I sent you here. When God speaks to you personally, it changes your life. Someone said because Donald Trump was in South Korea when this happened and Donald Trump mentioned me in an interview from South Korea. So one of my friends, Tom, Trump knows who you are. I said, my God called me. That Trump's Trump. <laughs> it's an amazing thing when God calls you to do something. Amen. And it's not always, I, I tell people, I was created for that moment. I was trained. I was a competitive shooter. I built a rifle that I used. I shot on a team, a church shooting team. We call ourselves the sinners because sinning in the Bible is an archery term, meaning missing the target. So we call ourselves the sinners. There was an army ranger, a former army ranger that shot on our team. He was a current San Antonio police officer. And we trained for three weeks on what to do if ever confronted with body armor. Why did a plumber need to know what to do when confronted with body armor. So God was developing and making a tool. And I, as a plumber, I like to talk about that tool as a chisel because he used me in something very hard and he broke me in some ways. God never abandons you. When he breaks you, he pulled me out. Now he's got the file and he's filing me in. And sometimes it hurts, but he's making me into a different tool now. I hope it's in for use in something much softer. <laughs> <laughs> but if he calls me to do the hard things, I am his tool and I will follow whatever my God asked me to do. I have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, no, I'll do two. No, no, no. <laughs> but those are the last two, Dawid and Wayne. Uh, sir, what is the nature of the character of the church now, today? Mm. We went from 49 that day and I didn't attend that church that day. They went from 49 people that day. During COVID, we're over 200. Wow. We guys came from South America and Africa and all over the world from a church that the community is under 600 total population. Wow. Wow. Amen. Amen. One last question, Dalit. The shooter eventually died from the shot, the thigh shot you gave him. How did he eventually die? I'm sorry? The shooter. You shot him in the thigh between the uh, armor plate. Is that the reason for his death? What caused his death eventually? Was it he that put shot? his pistol against the right temple and pulled the trigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe he was coughing up his own blood. He called his wife and his father and said, I've done something horrible and I've been shot multiple times. I'm not going to make it. And he killed himself. Hey, Stevie, um, that day when the shooting started, can you tell the audience what was being sung that day? The song? Uh, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all the time we have questions for. But 